As an audio engineer, I feel like your microphones are the type of brushes that you use to paint your picture. I have a very strange selection of microphones, I would say, but I also have the staples that everyone wants to use. I'm gonna show you guys some of my favorite. I won't show you guys all, cause that's gonna take forever. Let's go ahead and dive into our condensers first. Here is the Cal Audio HM7U. This will beat the U87, and this is only like 300 bucks. I had the privilege of working for a company called Blue Microphones. While I was there, I got to make my own microphones. I made a custom Blue Kiwi. It is pretty much your standard Kiwi, but it's gold. Uh, we made a microphone for Snoop Dogg, and he's like, yeah, but it's green. They sound super clean. Sounds like a U87, but a little bit warmer. This is a Beta 91A by sure. A lot of people's favorite kick-in mic, but my homie Sam Pura turned me on to this microphone, the Behringer 19A. If that's not a ripoff, I don't know what is, but this is rad. It sounds as good and honestly better, and it's a quarter of the price. Moving on to small diaphragm condenser mics. This is an RN17. The Rupert Nee family, my condolences for your loss. He was a great man. He changed the audio industry forever. Being part of the Latinx community, he was the biggest voice for us. And I am very, very grateful that I get to have pieces of gear with his name on it in my studio. But this microphone fucks. It is super detailed. The best transient response, not frequency response, but transient response I have ever heard on a microphone. This gets switched out with the Telefunkins, uh, the Elam 260s that you saw on Hi-Hat and Ride. Ends up on overhead sometimes, and it sounds fantastic. This microphone is a doozy. The Josephson C. 42. This microphone is really bright, very detailed. Another ripoff <laughs> from the blasting room. This is their go-to snare bottom mic. And honestly, it sounds fantastic on a lot of different sources. Anything that needs a lot of detail, great, great microphone. One microphone that I think everybody should have Mini DSP UMIK2. This is a measurement microphone. It's a USB mic, so you don't have to use your preamp, but this is the microphone I use to calibrate my control room. This does not have any DSP that corrects your room for you. It's not sonar works, it's nothing like that. It strictly measures your room. So you need to go in and fix it yourself. Bring in different types of traps, try things out, get this $100 mic and it's gonna change your life. I promise you that. I hate 421s. Here's a 421. There's a ton of different types of 421s. This one is a U5. So it is late 80s, early 90s. This has a different basket. I believe it has a whole different switch as well, which does matter. This is one of the best guitar cab mics ever. Never, ever use them on Thompson. Industry standard microphone, of course. The SM7, obviously, everyone talks about Thriller. Punk kids, they don't really give a shit about Thriller. This is what they use to record comeback kit with. Anyone that wants to hold the microphone to get that intensity from the performance, this is the microphone that you want. Oh, podcasting is fucking tight on this too. What's the one that everyone loves in LA? Joe Rogan. No, don't say that. <laughs> KCRW. KCRW uses this microphone. I'm gonna stick to that. Again, I have a ton of different microphones. Check out the website if you guys want more info. But one microphone I did want to bring out, this is called a 545. It is kind of the predecessor to a 57. It's dark. It's really, really good, especially if you have a snare that has some like weird overtones and you're obsessed with 57s on snare for whatever reason. Try this guy out. It's cheaper, sounds better, and it looks cute as fuck. Ribbon time. Like I told you guys, I'm obsessed with ribbons. Each ribbon obviously has its own voice. We talked about the Colts 4038. There are some other ribbon mics that I cannot live without. This is broken now. <laughs> This is an R84. I hate recording bass cabs very, very, very much. However, this microphone on a bass cab will fuck your whole existence up. It's really dark, really creamy. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful microphone. I got to use this on the fishbone session for a lot of the horn sections and it sounded not shrill. That's why you want a ribbon. The big bro to this, our trusty R88. So the cool thing about this is it has two elements, one on the top, one on the bottom. It's a technique called a bloom line. This is always on room for drums, and it is always on in my studio. If you're telling your friends secrets, this might be picking it up, so be careful. That's it for mics, dude.
One of the best investments you guys can make for your studio is getting a good quality drill, but most importantly, a drum drill bit. This will save you time, money, friendships, economy. It's the best thing I've ever bought. This is a couch. It doesn't match anything. The fuck else do you want me to say? We have this television over here with an Apple TV and we just wirelessly airplay over here so you can see the Pro Tools screen. Depending on what we are trying to do, we can also record video. And if you want to do a live session to get some content for your socials, this is the place to be. Now let's go check out the control room with more gear. If your drummer is playing drums and you're tired, you sit here, watch him play, think about quitting your band, think, am I making the right choices in my life? Of course I am, I'm recording on Riff Audio.